Lord, you know. You listen on the place of word. The radio is the best. You see the interaction of the people and the way they accepted the play and the way they felt about the play. And when I hear them speaking about the play, I said it's very worth it. It's it's a Bible study all within itself. It's a visual sermon all within itself. You went from Peter meeting Jesus all the way through. And that's basically the gospel. You know, and you did that, you know, and, and I think that that's important. So you had an entire Bible study in one night, but it was a visual study. Today we discuss the impact of our style of biblical storytelling at Calvary Chapel, Cape May, New Jersey. Can you see immersive storytelling deepening spiritual connections within your church community? Hello and welcome to Plays on Word Radio, where we discuss, analyze, work, and play on the Word of God. Thank you for joining us on this excursion today. Let's join Pastor Teddy, also known as Fred David Kenny Jr., the founder of Plays on Word Theater, as he does a deep dive into the Word of God. So we are here at Calvary Chapel, Cape May, New Jersey. Pastor Dave and Mark, it sounds like a bad law firm, but it's not. Believe me, believe me. Believe me. Um, yeah, these, these guys are uh, dear brothers in the Lord, and we have been trying to connect for a while to get the play that they just saw, which is the Pete play, the Pete presentation from Plays All Word. So just initial thoughts. So off the top of your head, Rabbi Dave. Uh, could you? I love that. Hey, I, love that. You, you just, I love that. Yeah, it's like right, that, that kind of stuff. Initial know. thoughts. What, what, what was I, thought the, I thought the play was outstanding. Yes. You covered the entire gospel yes. from soup to nuts. I mean, it was really, really incredible. You know what I mean? And I, I thoroughly enjoyed it, and it was informative. Uh, you you spoke a lot of scripture. Uh, you brought a lot of life to scriptures, and you gave a feeling, and you gave Pete a lot of personality, which I really like. You know, because we all think Peter has a personality of all of himself. You know what I mean? We all think that, that Peter is a unique person. You know, and I think that all of us relate to Peter at one time or another. You know, I, we were, I was blessed. Uh, I was blessed to put it in a nutshell. I was blessed. Amen. I was blessed. Amen. Amen. Yeah. Amen. Yeah. Amen. Amen. And I think that the Holy Spirit, using uh, your creativity mm -hmm. and carrying the gospel and your gifts and talents, both of you guys, yeah. mm -hmm. really put it alive on yeah. the stage yeah. for us yeah. with yeah. Uh, the factual presentation on top of the personal presentation, yeah. the move of the Holy Spirit Amen. for, uh, for Amen. us. Amen. And I think that people connect it with you. Amen. I yeah. think you, that you had something, that, which is I think is hard. I think you have a gift that, that where you connect with the people, and and even even you're coming down into the into the uh, congregation, so to speak, and talking to them individually or bringing them. I mean, you were there, don't you remember? When, yeah, and I think that's really good that you you're drawing them in instead of them just being. People who were sitting there watching, they became participants yes. of a play, and they, they they took oh you know what I mean, and I thought that's important you know because the gospels are for that amen that's what the gospels are supposed to do they're supposed to make us participants yeah. you know what I mean they're supposed to bring us in because what we're reading is not only history but we're re reading real events yeah. amen e events that change the world amen. and as we read it and as we hear it faith comes by hearing and hearing the word of God. Yeah. Our hearts are changed, Amen. and I think you did that very successfully tonight. And Thank we're you. very yeah. blessed. Yeah. It's it's yeah. always fun because people they, they start nodding their heads. Like when Pete says, "You remember that field with all the grass when Jesus taught all day?" And I see people going, "Um." And then when, once they realize it's the feeding of the five thousand, they're like, "Oh, wait a minute! Yeah, I've been there. Yeah. They've read it." Yeah. And so that I see people nodding their yeah. heads, like, "Oh, that, yeah. wait, that's right." Yeah. That's right. I was there, and it's, so there's a personal level. The the fourth the, in theater, the fourth wall or TV. It's rare when right. somebody breaks the fourth wall. Exactly. Talks to the audience. Very rarely do they break that fourth right. wall. Very rarely, but it's every time I've seen it, where they have talked to the audience yeah. and brought the audience in, it worked. Yes, yeah. you know, and you did that extremely successfully. Amen. You yeah. know, and that blessed me Amen. being brought in. We were part of it. We felt like we were part of the play. By, you know, one of the crowd. That's you know the key. Yeah, yeah, you're part yeah. Of it. I was waiting to take home my uh, leftover. Uh, fish. Yeah, really. I'm still waiting for my leftover <laughs> fish and bread. Come on. Yeah. I have, you know what I mean? But I will say it also strengthens our faith Absolutely. to have that presented in such a way that you include us 
as the congregation. Right. To, like we're there. You're there. Yeah. You know, we yeah. feel like what possibly could have felt like for that moment right. in space and time. Yeah. 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 I had a guy. The, um, I had a guy when Jesus raises Lazarus at a, a play a few years back. He actually he was so into the play that when Jesus said Lazarus come out, the guy was sitting in his chair and he went like this. He yeah. looked back. Wow. He was like he was so in it. Wow. And yeah. he was yeah. like he yeah. thought Lazarus was gonna. Mm -hmm. He it was. Yeah. And that was all I could do to not laugh. I was like, wow, he's really, he's, yeah. it, amen. Yeah. yeah. And then I had this past Thursday, uh, I had this guy. Uh, actually, I went up to him. His wife came and got me. He was blind, 100% blind. And he said, the play was incredible. I, I was there. Wow. I, I love, I love, yeah. I, I was so in it. And I'm like, I'm thinking to myself, I'm like, this guy can't even see. How, how does that even work? Mm -hmm. I, you know, I always thought it was, it was important for visual facial expressions and everything. Mm -hmm. I say this a lot. We have better special effects than sight and sound because we have the Holy Spirit and the human imagination. Mm -hmm. The Holy Spirit working with the human imagination, filling in the gaps. You didn't see the drum set there. Right. No. 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 You know? Uh -uh. That's right. You, it, no. It's like you you found yourself there. And, right. And that's, uh, that's a blessing to me. It is I, a blessing. And, you, and, and again, um, I was, I've been fortunate enough to sing in various productions. And one of the things that we were taught is to not stand there stiff singing, but as you're singing, move your hands and, you, you know, and, and that welcomes people yeah. in, yeah. you know, and that's what you did so successfully. Amen. You know, you welcome people into that world and they became the multitude. Yes. They became part of part the of play, the yes. you know, and they felt that. That's why I was sighting yeah. sound times 10 in a sense, because right. people are there, they're part of it. Right, they're part of the play. Right, and and and, I, and as you like you said, when you start giving them cues, mm -hmm. uh, you remember when, because they've <laughs> they read the word, because yes. they know know the word in some sort, and they go, oh, and they do remember it, and, and then all of a sudden it's like they were there. Yeah, that's right. Yes. Oh, you were, oh, oh, I was there. You know, yes. you know well, yeah, I remember that. Yes. <laughs> you know, and and it, it, it brought forth. And I, yeah. I think it's an excellent tool that the Lord uses to remember scripture and reinforce what happened there, Absolutely. you know? And go ahead, I'm sorry. Oh, I was just gonna say, and you had a couple of our congregants that wanted to fill in the gaps. Yeah, yeah right, <laughs> exactly. Yeah, they were eager they to were help you out. to fill in the space. Yeah. Like, oh yes, that was, yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I usually yeah. I usually work with that, like uh, I did tonight. I was yeah. like, oh, that's right, you were, yeah, you were there. Yeah, yeah. you were there, yeah, yeah. that was good. Yeah. Yeah. I think it was important uh, to, to have them. And uh, you know what, it takes a lot of, effort on your part to allow them to be a part of the play. Yes. You know what I mean? Right. Because it's so easy in a play, like if you go to a Broadway play, you know, they're, you know, you know what it reminded me of? It reminded me of being in, a, in an old melodrama theater, where in the old melodrama theaters, they would come out and they would start talking to the audience yeah. and they would start, you know what I mean? And, and it was cool. The audience it would become part of the play. Yeah. And it reminded me of that, you know what I mean? Because it was cool. It's a great technique and I love it. Amen. I Amen. love it. I think it was really good. Did, uh, did, uh, oh, okay. I thought the, the, the boat looked pretty good. Yeah, the boat looked real good. Yeah, I like the boat. Really? Yeah, we, I like we started boat. putting lights on the boat. In, that was uh, a good uh, move with the lights yeah. on the boat. Oh, wow. yeah. 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 Some kid came up to me. He said, uh, are you going to do Noah? And I said, son, <laughs> we need a bigger boat. Yeah, yeah. we, we got to have <laughs> a bigger boat. Yeah, uh, there you so go. So did anything, did anything stick out? Uh, I know you, you, I just hit you with a fire hose right now to ask you about one drop of water, but did anything in the play particularly minister to you? The woman bleeding for 12 years? Uh, the, you know, I thought you handled that very well. Uh, the the Jarius and the woman, yeah, yeah, yeah. it all takes place in one blip of a gospel. Yeah. You know what I mean? It's like a one narrative. Yes, right. You know, and and, and you handled it extremely well. Uh, and I've always liked that. I guess that's what stuck out to me. Mm. I've always liked that story. It's, Those two yeah. stories, how they connect. Yes. Yeah. You know, the, the child being 12 years old, the the issue of blood for 12 years old and you can get in the whole government thing with the 12 and things and then numerical values and stuff but just the heartfelt thing and my heart always always breaks for the woman yeah if i could just, just touch, touch his robe yeah. and then when he looked at her and said daughter, daughter. oh my gosh can, can, I, that really stuck to me, yeah, you know, and yeah. that's been, I've taught that before, yeah. and it is very, very poignant when he says daughter, daughter. and then like it's you the only said, place in the scripture where he calls somebody, I know, it's like you said, 
Mm-hmm. It had been ages since somebody talked to her in that way. Yeah. Yeah. She's used to, get away from me, you unclean thing. I know, throw stones at her, or you know what I mean? Right? And here's somebody in a gentle voice says, daughter. Mm-hmm. And your faith made you well. Yeah. Your faith healed you. You know, mm-hmm. and I, I, that was, a, for me, that was the most poignant part of the, show, of, of the play. Amen. You know? And yeah. that she hadn't been touched or hugged oh, my. in 12 years. Yeah. Yeah, to have heavy. no human touch and yeah. to be looked at as right. unclean, unclean, yeah. get away from me. Right. And, and I got. So and you're I, supposed to be social distancing. Yeah, yeah. social right. distancing exactly. for a long time. Yeah. Exactly. And, and I got to tell you that you filling up on stage while you were doing yeah, that is a, a touching, touching yeah. thing that yeah. you could tell your heart is being touched by the yeah. times in the yeah. scriptures yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah. that comes out across to real. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I can relate to that uh, on certain music that we yeah. played. For example, Goodness of God today, yes. I almost was yeah. ready to. Yeah. yeah, there are times when I'm on the team and yeah. when I'm singing where I, I, I well can't up. Because yes. it, it's, yeah. really, it's so poignant and it's so important and it's so beautiful. And yeah, I agree with Mark that, 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 that you, I think your emotions, and I watched you and I saw you and I, I was looking and you weren't acting. You know what I'm saying? You 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 weren't acting. You were in the moment. Yeah. You know what I mean? And you felt what you were trying to exhibit and show to the people. And that comes across. Yeah, Yeah, it does. People can relate to that. Yes. People can relate to that. The the nose running. Oh, yeah. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. The nose (laughs) running and the eyes, you know, watering and the whole schmear, you know. And and people relate to that because that's how we relate to Jesus. Yes. You know, we relate because Jesus was a real person. Yep. And, no and, and he was tender. And, and, and you know, and yeah. he was loving. And, you know, and I love the fact that when you said, um, oh, you have little faith. I always teach yeah. that when Jesus said of you, little faith, he smiled. He smiled. Yeah, yeah. yeah he smiled. Amen. It was never a rebuke. No, no. It was right. not a rebuke. It was like, like oh, you, you guys. Little faith. Yeah, 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 right. Yeah. And when you said that, I went, yeah, I, always, I say that. Yeah, I like that. You yeah, know? That's, yeah, that's a good one. Yeah, yeah Jesus, yeah. how about when Jesus goes out into the, when Peter is, Describing Jesus going out into the crowd, mm-hmm. and he paid attention. He looked right. You know, he looked yeah. people in the eye. Yeah. Yes, and didn't matter if a hundred people were pulling on him. He was yeah. focused. He was focused. Yeah. I'm guilty of talking past people sometimes but because have- of it's like ADD kicks in, and I'm like talking to somebody. Oh hey, yeah, hey buddy, I don't leave yet. Um, and what yeah. was it? yeah, yeah, and I yeah. the Lord's helped me to because of the play actually mm-hmm. to get better at focus on who's in front of you, pay attention, mm-hmm. and you know, let the Holy Spirit control right. how you move rather than you being chaotically like trying to say hey to everybody. Right. You know, and uh, it's helped me greatly. Yeah, that's that's yeah. almost the art of conversation. Yeah. You know, because when you talk to somebody, like after church, people will come to me and want to talk. And there's a lot of crowd and stuff like that. And you have to be extremely careful yeah. because... They want your time and they need that time. So therefore, there has to be eye contact, like you said, yeah. and there has to be, they have to know that you're interested in them. Right? Yes. You know what I mean? They have to know. So many of us, you know, and I've been guilty of this too, like you said, some of us look around for somebody better to talk to. Mm. <laughs> we don't want to talk to this person. We want to talk to that person yeah, over there. Yeah, yeah. You know what I mean? We're waiting to talk to this guy for weeks. Yeah, because they're yeah. more important than yeah. this person. But yet this person needs you you know what i'm saying so that there's an art to conversation yeah. that i think we have to master which is a learned process Amen. you know i mean we learn it through failure <laughs> and i like that you brought it out that the creator of the universe wants to mm. know you personally Amen. look Amen. in your eyes and Amen. hear what you have to say to him right. that's a that's the key for yeah. personal relationship in my yeah, 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 yeah 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 uh, well i'm glad you guys were blessed we were we, this has been in the making for a long, a lot of long time. We were we're so grateful to finally bring Pete down here because yeah. you know, yeah. and it was the Lord's time. How the Lord wanted, Lord wanted, you and know. you know what? I was extremely blessed with the amount of people that were able to come. Amen. Praise I Amen. was very happy with the Amen. with the amount of people that showed up for the. It's a Sunday night. Right, you know, uh, and and six o'clock, you know, it's a, yep. you know, That's now we thing. normally pray at six o'clock on okay. Sunday night. We have okay. a prayer group, but we don't have near as many that were out there tonight. Well, as as senior pastor here, uh, Dave, what would you what would you say to other pastors? Because I, it's hard to explain, and I can't, you know, if I go up to somebody and say, hey, you know, I uh, the the Lord put this play on my heart, and, mm-hmm. and I don't, what would you say to another pastor about what you saw tonight? Well, as someone who's drug his feet for a while before getting you out here. Which is honorable, actually. I would say 
what took me so long, first of all. But I would also tell a, a, a pastor that to see the interaction of the people and the way they accepted the play and the way they felt about the play, and when I hear them speaking about the play, I said it's very worth it. It's it's a Bible study all yeah. within itself. Right. Right. So you know, it's a visual sermon. Yeah, it's a visual yeah. sermon all within itself. Because like I said, you went from, you know, Peter meeting Jesus all the way through. You know what I mean? And that and that's basically the gospel, you know, and you yeah. did that, you know, and, and I think that that's important. So you had an entire Bible study in one night, but it was a visual Bible study, yeah. you know, and, and I think that that was so valuable. Yeah, so I would tell a past, any pastor that they should um, consider having something like you or you or whatever to come and do this event. You know what I mean? Yeah. Uh, the price is right. Amen. <laughs> you know? Amen. Amen you know? to that. And that, that, unfortunately, that does play a game sometimes. You know, sometimes yeah. we have to worry about finances yeah. and yeah. things like that, you know. But but I thought that, uh, it, I think it, I think we're, we're now where I'm thinking, hmm, when can I get Genesis Joe? Yeah, yeah. You know what I mean? I'm thinking, yeah. I need to see Genesis Joe. I, yeah, need, yeah. I need the trilogy. You know, yeah. I need it all. Yeah. You know what I mean? We bring, and we, Genesis Joe is the same type of type. You, you go from crying to laughing, mm -hmm. back to crying to laughing, and every emotion in between. I can and it's imagine. A, it's, a yeah. long, it's a longer format, like Pete's a longer format. Right. Christmas right. Joe was a smaller play yeah. than the concert. Mm -hmm. Right. right. Well, this was mm -hmm. a full on, yeah, almost, was, almost an hour and a half, two hours of just. Straight. Yeah. What were you, gonna say? you know what I felt that was also good? The fellowship among the brethren Amen. was a little more familiar, mm. a little more comfortable. Not that Sunday is uncomfortable because we're brothers and sisters mm. in Christ, but it was a little more where we could right. lay back. We're sitting right. on the Mount of Olives. Yeah. Or yeah, 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 right. yeah. Yeah. It's a different setting. It yeah. was you know a mean? different setting. And what yes. I think about it is, is what people need to know it's non-confrontational. Yeah. It's it's not you know it, there's there's no pressure. You know it, it, it's easy for get someone to come. Yeah. You yeah. know to something like this. Yes. Yeah. And they would come to see a play, and they're sitting there enjoying themselves, not realizing that they're hearing the gospel. Amen. You know what I'm saying? That's it. So it, it, it's beautiful. You We've know? seen people come out to to plays actually that weren't going to a church, and they they were like, "Well, this isn't so bad." And they they uh, they made that their home church. So they, yeah. They, they come back. Yeah. And uh, yeah, Praise so God. and and every play we do, the gospel goes forward. Mm -hmm. And I regret that we're out of Bibles. I normally would be like, hey, whoever prayed that prayer, mm -hmm. we have a free Bible for you, you know. But we we need to order more because we're mm -hmm. out. We have new believer Bibles we were mm -hmm. giving to people, and we got rid of a case or whatever. So we yeah, yeah. we've we've gone through them. So I have another question. How about the bass player? The bass player. Yeah. Smooth, yeah. smooth jazz. Smooth brother. Roy. <laughs> smooth Roy. The Holy Spirit yeah. touches Roy, Roy you. Larson, yeah. who has not been on the podcast, but Roy Larson is, is on the board of directors of Plays on Word. Wow. Uh, yeah, he's one of the guys that helps to make the ship run smoothly. Any thoughts? He who was silent is deemed wise. <laughs> <laughs> Proverbs. Yeah. Yeah. Proverbs. I yes. love it. No, it's, 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 it's always fun being in a support role. I think God's been gracious with a lot of people and those of us at this table where he's shown us what our roles are. Yeah. Mm. And those are the ministries he's given us. And we, you know, we're faithful to that. Mm -hmm. We do it to the best of our ability. Mm -hmm. uh, whether you're in the limelight or not is totally irrelevant. Mm -hmm. You're in God's limelight. Amen. And, Amen. you know, able to, I'm just thinking what you've been saying about the play. I've seen, obviously seen the play many times. Sure. But because it's the gospel that's come to life, there have been things in my memory from the play that I have interjected into conversations Absolutely. with people sure. talking about the gospel. Right, right. And you know, I'll give you an example of one. Was, uh, you know, when Peter is asking Jesus, well, what about John? Yeah. I know, <laughs> we know. talk about that all oh, the time. Yeah. You know, yeah, we do. Someone said to me once, you know, I saw this person over there. They, they claim they're a Christian and they're really they're lousy people and they're, mm -hmm. they're cheating and they're no good. And I can't deal with God. I said, well, but that's not how Jesus dealt with Peter. Right. <laughs> what are you talking about? And then I tell that mm -hmm. part of the story. <laughs> yeah. Oh. Mm -hmm. And so, you know, people coming out of your congregation, even if they take one little nugget, mm -hmm. put it in the back of their brain, mm -hmm. God will use it. Amen. 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 And I'll, I'll say something during a during a message uh, that 
Don't sit there and poke the person next to you and say, this is for you, or be thinking of someone who this should hear this. No, what you're hearing is for you. <laughs> you know, Peter's almost like, and to go back to what, you're, what you first said is about knowing our place and knowing what our ministry is. We always like to, like to quote um, uh, Clint Eastwood in the, the, the movie where he said, a man's got to know his limitations. Man, you <laughs> have to know his limitations. Amen. Yeah, yes. yeah, yeah, right. Well, I tell you what, speaking, speaking of that, let's, let's just transition into Calvary Chapel, Cape May. How did we arrive here? Uh, tell me about Calvary Chapel, Cape May. Actually, let's go before Calvary Chapel, Cape May. When did you meet Jesus, Rabbi Dave? Wow. I was blessed to meet Jesus in 1991. Okay. It was late in life. I was 43 years old. I met the Lord Jesus um, one afternoon after my wife had prayed for me. Um, uh, we were having a very difficult time in our marriage and uh, probably would have divorced. Um, it was a very difficult time in our marriage. Uh, Beatrice, uh, my wife, uh, decided that she didn't want to be divorced. And I didn't realize that she was a backslidden Christian. And she went back to the Lord and started praying for me. Wow. And uh, her prayers <laughs> took hold. <laughs> And one day I was uh, walking around my work and it was just, I just felt like I got hit by a bolt of lightning mm. and I accepted Jesus into my heart. Amen. And uh, that's when I accepted him Wow. and began walking to him. And I made a promise to the Lord. And I remember the Lord telling me that I'll take care of the marriage. You follow me. Mm, man. And I said, okay. And uh, he has. He has made the marriage incredible. He's made it to be something that uh, I believe what is what I've always wanted in life. So Amen. Amen. I've been so blessed. Thank, thank God for a praying wife. Amen. How, Amen. Important, how, is, how important is it for spouses to pray for one another? Oh, it's extremely important. Well, sometimes we, extremely we don't, important. We, you know, we, we overlook that. Exactly. I know I, I have to you be. Take it for granted. Yeah, take it for granted. Yeah. Oh, yeah. you know. Yeah. Yeah. And there, yeah. You, that's a prime example. Absolutely. Like, Wow. Absolutely. Yeah. Prime yeah. example. And I got I got saved and we started attending a small fellowship in Ocean City called Maranatha by the Sea. And it was a it was a Calvary Chapel affiliate. Okay. And uh I just wanted to be involved. Amen. I couldn't get enough of it. I wanted to be involved and I started doing all sorts of things, was raised to be a an assistant pastor of some sort, you know, and, and uh but uh, uh I, it was great. I just couldn't get enough of the Lord. So how does Vine, how does Vineland come into play? I left that church okay. in Ocean City, okay. and I went to a true Calvary Chapel in Vineland. Okay, and under the uh, tutelage and pastoral of Frank Capolito. Frank Capolito, right. and he became my pastor. Amen. All right, and I was with him, served with him, and I remember talking to him one time. We were at Sandy Cove at the at the pastors' conference in Sandy Cove, and I was talking to him, and he basically said, "David, you can come here. You can do anything you want." And I did, and I, I did everything. I mean, I taught children's ministry. I helped paint the church. I, I sang on the worship team for, yeah. for years. I, 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 I was taught Bible studies. I, you know, did, I did everything you could think of. Pedal to the middle. Right, I did everything you could think of, and I just learned. Yeah. And it was, it was good. So, so yeah. when, did, when did the Lord give you the green light or give you say, okay, I want you to go to Cape May and... Well, he gave me, it was very interesting because in, in, uh, I got saved in 91. Yeah. And in 1993, as I said, I was being raised up in this one church and I was doing the announcements and I would have people come to me and go, well, you have a calling. And I didn't understand mm. what that meant. Mm. I didn't understand what the, why, what do you mean calling? <laughs> and on WIBG of, out of Ocean City, they had a new beginning with Greg Glory every day. I love it. And I listened to that. Well, I felt the Lord put upon my heart. I wrote Greg a letter. Wow. I wrote him a letter and said, I, I don't understand what it means to be called. Mm. I, did, I didn't understand it. And I wrote that. So I think, lo and behold, I got a letter back from Greg. Wow. It wasn't from Greg exactly. It was from one of his pastors. Mm -hmm. um, and he said that Greg had given me his letter or given him my letter and he was writing back. So anyhow, he gave me a list of things to look for to see if I was called in the ministry. And as I read down the list, I was 
<laughs> I was excited because each one, yeah, each one matched me until I got to the end. And it said I had to have peace of God that surpasses understanding about the calling. I didn't have that peace. So I was somewhat devastated. I didn't understand it. So I went up on the Ocean City Beach, which we lived a stone's throw from the beach in Ocean City. It was, I forget, I think it was in November. It was the, anyhow, I went up on the beach and I cried out to God. I didn't understand what's going on. Why don't I have this peace? I, if you're calling me, I want to know about it, blah, blah, blah. Came home and I went into my room where I studied and I decided I wasn't going to play Bible roulette. I wasn't just going to flip through some pages and point and claim that verse. Mm -hmm. I said, Lord, if you're going to speak to me, you're going to speak to me exactly where my reading takes me that day. I had been reading through the book of Acts. I was in chapter 26. Paul was standing before Agrippa. King Agrippa okay. and he was saying his testimony. And I was reading down and I got the verse where it says, Jesus talking to Paul, stand and I have made you a minister. Da, da, da. And all of a sudden, I froze. Yeah, yeah. Tears streamed down my eyes. He was talking right and I knew exactly what he was talking about. Mm. And in that promise, I knew, I knew in my heart that one day he would use me in a way that I couldn't dream. Amen. That it would possibly be a pastoral in one day. Wow. That was in 1993. Okay. 17 years later, <laughs> okay. 17 years later, I was going to Calvary Chapel Vineland, and I had a dear friend of mine by the name of Bob Lambert, and we, his, his family and my family were excited. I was trying to set something up in Upper Township. Pastor Frank had wanted me to set something up in Upper Township, all right? And he was down here trying to set something up in Cape May. We became dear friends. My group in, in Upper Township would meet with his group in Lower Township down here. We would get to know each other, and make a long story short, he started Calvary Chapel, Cape May. All right. Sadly, his wife developed cancer and passed away in 2008, July 2008. He tried to continue, but he could not continue. I retired from school teaching in 2009. I was a school teacher. I retired from school teaching in 2009. And that was in June. In July, I went into Frank Cipollino's office. I said, when's the Lord going to use me? And he said, it's only been a month since you've retired. <laughs> What's your hurry? I said, I don't know. At one time, Beatrice and I thought that we would go over to Delaware and start some sort of a fellowship. So I said to Frank, B and I are going to go back to Delaware. And he sat there and he shook his head. And I said, okay, where am I going? He said, I think you're going to Cape May. I went, there's a problem with Cape May. So what do you mean? I said, Bob's there. He said, unfortunately, I don't think Bob's gonna make it. I didn't think anything of it. I just prayed about it. This was in July. In October, I get a phone call from Bob. He and I used to meet at Starbucks to have coffee all the time. We were friends. He called me and said, Dave, I want to talk to you. I need want to ask you a question. And I went, well, Tell me what the question is. I'll pray about it so that when we meet, we can talk about it. And he said, I want you and Beatrice to come down and take over the ministry. Wow. I couldn't believe my ears. Yeah. So the next time I saw my pastor, I raised my hand and said, hail to the prophet. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah. So in, in, in February of 2010, after going through Pastor Frank, after going through Joe Foch, after going through Lloyd Pulley, I came down here as, as pastor of Calvary Chapel Cape May. Wow, that's fantastic. Yeah. yeah. How happy was your wife that you got saved? Like, oh, she was ecstatic I, mean, I she got saved. Been. She got ecstatic. She was ecstatic. I got, see, you kidding prayers me? answer and then me? see the change. That, oh, yeah. It, it was incredible. It was she incredible. reminds him I got you saved. No. Yeah. yeah. She reminds me. Hey, if it wasn't for me. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> amen. Amen. That's all the time we have for today on this episode. We're going to continue this next week, you guys. But until then, may the Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face to shine upon you and be gracious to you. The Lord lift up his countenance upon you and give you peace.
This program was made possible by the Plays on Word family of supporters. To find out more, check out our website at playsonword.org.